This episode is sponsored by Noom. Noom keeps you on track and helps you meet your goals when it comes to getting healthy and staying active. You get matched with a personal goal coach who is a real person that is trained in psychology, fitness, and nutrition. If you're interested in learning more and trying out Noom for yourself, click the link in the description to take your free Noom evaluation. It's quick, easy, and will help you create your custom plan. Why is that dot berserking out like it drank a strobe light? Someone had to manually paint this, right? Are they on drugs? Opening logo doesn't feature a cutesy movie-specific motif, leading me to question whether or not this is truly a Disney picture. God, remember when we had to sit through the credits before getting into the movie and we liked it? I swear to God, this opening credit sequence represents 88% of this f***ing movie. Leashing your dog to a phone booth. What a Superman needs to use this sh Or Ron Burgundy. Or Colin Farrell. My story begins in London. Dalmatian narration. Not so very long ago. And yet so much has happened since then that it seems more like an eternity. By the end of this movie, Pongo will have a mate and 99 puppies to care for. This is more than a simple eternity ago reflection. This is a deluge of responsibilities in the form of a nightmare. It was a beautiful spring day. Tedious time of the year for bachelors. I'm sorry, what? Spring is a tedious time of year for bachelors? Why? What are they doing that makes spring tedious? It was plain to see that my old pet needed someone. Is there any hope that Pongo is talking about a maid or a professional organizer and not a dutiful wife to tend to the bachelor? No, there is no hope. And what the hell is his obsession with tucking letters behind frames? Unusual breed. That's racist. Well, I do say. Way too many seconds of this dog ogling the female passers-by. It was a problem. A real problem. Judging people on whether or not they'll be a good mate based solely on their appearance? Yeah, that's a real problem. I mean, looking at a sweet face is great, but if there's a devil behind the eyes, then that's a real issue. Most beautiful creature on four legs. Catcalling. Well, she's very lovely too. But is her soul beautiful, Pongo? Hmm? She could be a wretched horror of a human, but as long as that ass is tight, she's all right. Is that the idea? How did Pongo manage to open the delicate cover of the clock without disturbing the brim of the hat that was clearly hanging down earlier? And yes, a dog changing the clock is also dumb. Also, look at how high the mantle of that fireplace is. To reach it, Pongo must be the size of a small horse. <coughs> Owners that are this chill while their dogs are barking up a storm can eat an entire bag of dicks. The dog isn't the problem here, it's this lady. Oh look, everyone that Pongo saw walking down the street just happened to go to the exact same spot. Makes sense, London is such a small town. Yo, if you bothered to leash your dog, during the entire walk to and through the park, why take it off now? You don't think he'd bolt as soon as he saw a squirrel? Reading with your eyes closed is not reading, it's vertical napping. I was determined that somehow they just had to meet. Why does Pongo have such a boner for this lady and her dog all of a sudden? He's been with Roger for a long time, right? Why does today need to happen? Where did Purdy's leash go? Anita just had her linked up a few seconds ago. Jeez, five seconds after meeting each other and Anita's already soaking wet. Oh, ha ha, look at your kerchief. It is so small compared to my massive kerchief. Oh, ha ha ha, let's f Wilt thou love her? Comfort her? Whoa, man, we're going from laughter to marriage real fast here. And forsaking all others. Wait, where's the witness to this union? Is this legal? For the first six months or so. So we're skipping over the part where Anita walks into Roger's bachelor pad, rolls up her sleeves, and promptly slaps him in the face for being such a slob? <sighs> Hey, how did the two dogs work out so well? I understand the meat cute went well for the humans, but that doesn't mean Purdy and Pongo are perfect, right? Oh, that's Nanny. What the hell does Anita do for a living? Roger's a struggling musician, but she pulls down enough scratch that they can afford a f***ing live-in maid? All right, I've spent several minutes examining the portraits around the house, and I can confidently tell you that Roger and Anita are strangely obsessed with dogs. Like, we think Cruella is off, but these two are f***ing bonkers for dog pictures on every goddamn wall. Melody first, my dear, and then the lyrics. Mansplaining. I knew Corella's not a peach, but why is Roger such a dick about her? Has she ever done anything to him besides, I guess, not coming to their wedding? Also, I understand that animation style is a choice, but once you realize that Cruella's hand is as long as her entire face, it really changes how terrifying she is. My only true love, darling, I live for furs. If this is the case, why doesn't Anita know this already? Haven't they been friends for a long-ass time? I mean, if you're gonna take the time to animate the clock hands, you might as well have had them match the time. What the hell is Cruella smoking that it puts off this noxious color smoke? Hell, even PCP doesn't look this toxic when you freebase it, or so I've heard. There are three cupcakes indicating that Cruella was expected, and considering she must be a horrible house guest at each visit, why tempt her to return with a sweet treat? Don't worry, Purdy. They're on to her. They're not. She wants our puppies. That's all she's after. Holy shit, Purdy is pregnant. And this far along, how is she not showing anything? Oh, jeez. I love how much this animation captures the essence of dogs, how their expressions change, how they look adorable and then vulnerable in the next second. Just take us in off before I start crying, you asshole sin counter. 13. 
No, no, no. Fourteen. Oh, fifteen. This family is way too happy about what is happening with this poor dog's vagina right now. We lost one. Holy sh movie dares to suggest immediate puppy death? And you thought Bambi was harsh. If ever there is a reason to be thankful for a man's right hand muscle memory, it is to save puppies. Roger's seriously trying to Dr. Frankenstein this poor bastard back to life using electricity and his hand juice, and it works. See? is just as good as new. Considering the puppy is literally brand new, this is really not that impressive of a statement. How about a holy f this one's name is Lazarus. They'll have their spots in a few weeks. If Corella is such a murder hard-on for these dogs, how does she not know this fact? I figure animal cruelty requires a lot of research. You can scarcely afford to feed yourselves. <laughs> Although there is, oddly enough, plenty of room in the budget to keep a full-time housekeeper employed. This wretched, wretched pen! Who's the real asshole here? The lady that absentmindedly shook her fountain pen or the dickheads that sat there and did jack sh while the ink was flying onto them? Pongo and his pet have been in the kitchen pacing back and forth super worried about Purdy birthing puppy. Turns out Purdy wasn't in the next room giving birth. She was out the kitchen door and down a flight of stairs into the cellar. How many walls need to separate the men from the birthing? Ah, yes, get as far away as you possibly can because God forbid you see the miracle of childbirth. Also, Nanny ran upstairs for a towel when there were plenty within arm's reach. Purdy, we're keeping the puppies, every single one of them. Great, but you want to check on how she's feeling? This poor bitch just birthed 15 off the ring. You don't want to bring her some ice chips or something? I like to tear his gizzard out. Why, Patch, where did you ever hear such talk? Certainly not from your mother. Asks the mother, who somehow forgets that television influences language while currently watching television. I'm hungry. You've just had your dinner. But I am just the same. Kids. We want to go for a walk in the park. Dad, can we? The animation on these puppies is f***ing adorable, but it also conceals the fact that nothing happens in this movie when Corella's not on screen. The it's more boring than the actual puppy bowl. And before you defend the puppy bowl, let me ask you, have you actually watched more than five minutes of that broadcast? You're not coming in here, not with the Mr. and the Mrs. gone. Yes, tell them the Mr. and Mrs. are gone. That's step one in what not to do when a stranger arrives on your doorstep at night looking hella suspicious. If you don't get out of this house, I'll call the police, I will. Or, and I suppose this could be a stretch, you could call the police immediately. Police! Help! The puppies! I know this was set in the 60s, but there are f***ing telephones in London, right? Hell, we saw one of the dogs chained to a phone booth at the beginning of the movie. Sure, the dog napping is big news for those who are watching the movie, but is it really front page material? Why not put the story about the surprise talks at Geneva on the byline? Also, as always used to happen, the copy has nothing to do with the actual headline. This article is about a Canadian pit disaster, which is a hilarious way to contextualize a fight at a Nickelback concert. Roger, I admit she's eccentric, but she's not a thief. What does Corilla have on Anita? Pictures from a heist they pulled back in grade school or something? It's just very odd to me that Anita doesn't entertain the possibility of Cruella stealing the pups in the slightest. What'll we do? Look, I know it's hard to lose a pet. Even worse when it's several of them. But in the grand scheme of things, let's be honest. They're not facing bankruptcy or a major surgery or the death of a loved one or a Manchester United loss at the hands of Barcelona. Let's get a little perspective up in here is all I'm saying. I'm afraid it's all up to us. Pongo thinks of his human as a pet, so why would he expect that his pet would be in charge of such things like finding his kids? And if our puppies are anywhere in the city, the London dogs will know. But forget about asking why they haven't done this already. The Great Dane at Hampstead. <laughs> so do dogs know three languages? They understand human English, speak dog English to each other that humans cannot understand, and also they speak fluent bark, which apparently dogs and some other animals may understand as well. None of it really makes sense, but we just go along with it because animals talking seems like the best fantasy. In reality, they just nag you about smelling your ass, sharing food, and be very specific about where to scratch their bodies. Nobody has time for that level of attention. Yo, Hanna-Barbera didn't even pretend that they didn't lift the look for Scooby-Doo from this picture, did they? A sound alert! <laughs> <laughs> there are moments in this movie that are just pure joy, and even a grizzled f***o like me can be convinced to remove a sit. I can promise you, the first time my dog howled into a gutter to communicate any sort of dog gossip, I would immediately remove the gutters. Or relocate the doghouse, I suppose. If they're within earshot and this part of the communication is so important, why don't they just meet each other in person in the middle? Oh, I'll get the rest of it. Uh, <clears throat> You know, it really is incredible, the things that used to entertain us in movies. Can you imagine children everywhere thrilled to see dogs barking back and forth for six goddamn minutes? It sounds like puppies, sir. Of course, puppies. If the cat can understand the barking, why would he need to wake up the old batty colonel at all? I don't care what bull Corella's up to in here. Breaking and entering is still a f***ing felony. They're over there by the TV. This house is dilapidated and really should be on the verge of being condemned. But they have a functional TV, and that picture's not even fuzzy. Watch out for the bad ones. Those two blokes. Horace and Jasper. They're mean ones, they are. Don't you just love when you give important advice, but the other person immediately walks toward danger? I just told you not to go there! Watch me potty's lordship smack on the conk! The writers and the performers had an argument about how Cockney was too Cockney. Sucking a cat! 
the items on this piano tell a better story than the movie itself. A hot water bladder besides suspenders, which are draped over a boot that contains a fork, beside an elaborately decorated cake that is adjacent to a wine bottle, an empty glass, and sardine can just above an open can of beans. This is the movie we all need. Or a cat casserole. Come on, casserole was right there. I'm pretty sure they're showing this sequence of Pongo and Purdy running out to find the puppies in actual time. It's amazing that such a short-ass movie can feel interminable at times. The Colonel will take you to your puppies at the DeVille place. The f Anita said Scotland Yard investigated Cruella, but they didn't check her f***ing house. Starting to think British police are just as bad as America's. Holy sh! these dogs just ran right through autumn. I like how this movie just cuts away from Pongo and Purdy in peril. The story of how these two city dogs fit for strolls in the park can jump into an icy raging river and survive a winter storm. We don't want that part of the story. They're lost or captured or something or other. Or maybe they were hoofing it from 83 miles or 133 kilometers away through a drop in temperature so goddamn severe it causes a river to freeze overnight. Maybe that. How the hell have frickin' Frack been keeping these puppies fed, let alone this clean? Sounds like the investigation's been going on for at least a few days, and there are 99 of these little bastards. <laughs> Holy sh! he must be drinking that jet fuel shit that Joaquin Phoenix brewed up in the master. Come on, Oris. Let's get on with it. Movie continues to be extremely casual about the very real potential of these puppies being skinned alive. It's the Colonel. Man, I forgot how absolutely useless any of the humans are in this movie. Like, where the hell are Roger and Anita? This movie featuring a grown man being burned to death features no goat masks, random punch outs, or bees. All 15? Twice that many, Dad. Now there's 99 of us. Math. This is not how horse legs bend. Horse's ass gets taken out by horse's ass, and before you ask, horse's ass is next. What's with the incredible journey here? I can't Purdy or Pongo stay with the kids while the other parent goes out to get the adults. Or hell, find shelter while the storm blows over. The point is, traveling out in the open at this time is the dumbest of all your options. Do they like warm milk? It's fresh. I know it's a sweet gesture, but something about this cow offering these puppies to suck on her udders just gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> The little darlings. What an odd reaction to teeth yanking at your teeth. Ouch, you little f***ers, be gentle with my naps is more like it. Well, now, what have we here? 101 doggy footprints from the same dogs you were currently hunting that you happened to come across while speeding down the lane like a bat out of hell, which is so improbable that it must absolutely be bullshit convenience? <gasps> it's been too long since I looked at a road sign because I'm confused. Is Dinsford three miles this way and also five miles this way? We'll all roll in the soot. We'll all be Labradors. Great idea, but don't you think the evil assholes will be suspicious of 101 puppies of any type? I mean, they do notice and are just too dumb to recognize them, but still doesn't make the idea any less sinful. Of course, there has to be this reveal to build the tension, and it's an epic moment of the movie, but it's like the storytellers forgot that the snow on the ground would easily remove the soot on their legs this entire time. Also, the movie presupposes that dog fur is this easy to clean. It can't be. It's impossible. That someone hired a truck to deliver furniture and forgot to close the back? Yes, it does seem impossible. Meanwhile, there are zero other humans in this world noticing all the things happening to these dogs. Hey, how'd they close that drawer from the inside? None of this furniture topples over and kills a dog. <laughs> Having this much traction while in this amount of snow. Not like she's in a Hummer, for Christ's sake. Damn, I know Cruella was a pretty bad character, but when did she literally turn into Satan? Jasper, Horace, and Cruella survived this. Fleeing the scene. You idiots! You fools! You imbecile! See, kids, if you're a bad person and attempt to kill a man driving a truck or kidnap dogs to make coats, you'll wind up carless in a snowdrift. And isn't that just awful enough to deter you from being wicked? That's your first big hit. It's made more money than we ever dreamed of. How the hell long was this whole adventure? Even if it's been a few days, or say a week, maybe two, but certainly not long enough to write and record and receive royalties from a hit song. What on earth? Who was a Labrador? Ah, for one moment, envision opening your door and 101 dogs running inside. Do you react calmly? No, you freak the f*** out and start fighting for your life. The fact that these people respond to their house being filled with pissing and f***ing puppies covered in ashes by adopting them all is probably the biggest lie of this movie. A hundred and one! Finally. Now I'll roll the goddamn credits already. Uh Dalmatian oh, plantation. Raj, that's truly an inspiration. It'll be a sensation. Roger and Anita were having a nice little romantic rhyme going on. Then discount Mrs. Potts here just had to chime in. I like how the movie presents that everyone moves to the country to live happily ever after. In reality, all these neighbors would have collectively lost their shit and booted them to the country. That's 101 dogs barking. 101 dogs shitting. 101 dogs shedding. None of this is a good idea. Dogs bark and all the lights in the city turn on to react to them. When in actuality, if a dog is barking in the house, you just yell at it to shut up before inconveniencing yourself to get out of bed and turn on a light. 
Marinara is the Italian ketchup, and British food is terrible. Thanks again to Noom for sponsoring this episode. If you've been looking to exercise more, eat better, and just generally get healthier, then Noom is for you. You get put on a custom plan with your own personalized goal coach to help you accomplish what you've set out to do. You can learn from daily lessons like break the behavior chain. You'll learn how to identify your own bad habits and triggers in order to change your behavior. The support system is great too. You can chat with fellow Noom users and encourage each other as you work towards your goals. If you're interested in learning more and trying out Noom for yourself, click the link in the description to take your free Noom evaluation. It's quick, easy, and will help you create your custom plan. Marriage is what brings us together. Oh, Pongo. Oh, I'm so happy! I'm so happy! Oh, poor little thing. Wrong kid, Dad. Around the Johnny owner and off to the park. You sound like you're from London. My family's gone on one block alone. It's almost too easy. Oh, you pathetic pair of pitiful pinheads. I'm sad. There's 99 of us all together. F*** off. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. Retreat! Run away! Run away! Run away! The name of the explorer who discovered Mozambique.